Hi, I'm Dave Gardy from Maritime TV for another Ballast Water Management Report. And with us coming to us from Florida is Steve Candido, president of Ecochlor. Steve, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Dave. Hey, we started last week, this is the second in a series of VITA updates, and you explained a little bit about what was going on because the uh, submission for comments deadline is November 25th. But the regions of the Great Lakes and the Pacific region, there's also some findings there. Can you go into that a bit? Yeah, so uh, this is where there'll probably be maybe most of the comments coming in because there are some um, changes here with these uh, two regions that are different than under the old regulations and under the old VGP. So I'm sure uh, the industry is going to want to take a close look at this and make some comments. So um, starting with the, uh, well, I, I guess a preliminary comment is that uh, the, both the regions are looking at requirements to not only have a ballast water management system on board, but to continue the requirement of exchanging ballast water. Of course, that's been the standard up until this point before there were approved systems. Uh, but there is some distinctions between the Great Lakes and the Pacific region. Okay. What are those distinctions? So in the Great Lakes, um, they basically are saying if you're a salty, as they call them, meaning you're coming in from a saltwater environment outside the, uh, the U.S. or outside the Canadian waters, um, you're gonna, you must exchange and treat. You have to do both. Now, if you're just, um, interestingly, if you're just a laker, meaning you don't go outside of the Great Lakes, there's really no standard at all. You don't have to exchange and you don't have to uh, treat. Um, and so that's a bit controversial because a lot of the environmental communities expected that even within the Great Lakes, you can have some transfer of invasive species. And they thought that um, there should be some requirement for treatment. But right now, if you're a laker and you're only staying in the Great Lakes, you don't have to put a ballast water system on board. So I expect a lot of comments on that. What about the Pacific region? So now, interestingly, the Pacific region also has this concept of exchange and treat, but it's 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 much um, more limited. Let me put it that way. So um, you can you can just use treatment if you have a approved ballast water treatment system on board. The only area where you can't use treatment alone is if the vessel is coming from an area that has um, less than an 18 psu salt content. All right, and so that's the first bit of controversy is now the owners really have to track where they're coming from and understand the water that they picked up is less than 18 PSU. If that's the case, then they do have to do both exchange and treat. Although there is still an exception there, and it's interesting because the exception is that if you have a ballast water treatment system that can meet a standard that's 100 times more stringent than what's in today's regulations, then you can just treat. You don't have to uh, exchange. But of course, there are no systems that meet that 100 times standard. So basically, if you're coming from a low salt water region on the Pacific coast, you're going to have to do both exchange and treat. Interesting perspective. So this, again, comment period due. Deadline is November 25th. Any other final thoughts? No, that's, uh, that's the key point is November 25th. It's a short comment period. And so I urge the whole industry, whether you're an owner, you're a manufacturer, you're in the environmental community, to get those comments in by the 25th. Excellent. Well, we appreciate the time you've taken for part two of this VITA update series. Thank you for joining us, Steve. Thank you, Dave. I'm Dave Gardy from Maritime TV, from our studios here in Washington, D.C., for another Ballast Water Management Report. Thanks for watching.